Hello, friends, and uh, welcome to a in-between games version of Flames Nation Live. It's Wednesday. It's uh, May 25th. Happy 33-year anniversary of Calgary Stanley Cup victory over Montreal. And things a little bit more somber in Flamesland right now, uh, knowing the series score they face down three games to one in the Battle of Alberta in round number two. Dallas, you were first in. Damian, JF, and Josh also with us on Flames Nation Live. Michael comes in as well. Get your thoughts, comments in on the live chat if you'd like to be a part of it. Um, or just sit back and uh, enjoy the latest edition of Flames Nation Live. It's Pat Steinberg coming at you from our Sportsnet 960 downtown studio. Just finished up a Wednesday edition of Flames Talk, which is available for you on Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcast. Flames Nation Live brought to you, as always, by our good friends, at DoorDash. DoorDash, a partner of the Nation Networks. Uh, we see him on the Daily Faceoff show, the DFO Rundown, uh, Flames Nation Radio, and a whole lot more. And DoorDash brings you Flames Nation Live every time. Uh, if you'd like to use that promo code, you can get 25% off your first delivery uh, and free delivery if you go download the app, create the account, and use the promo code FNLIVEDD. Once again, FNLIVEDD. DD, you do that, and uh, you're getting 25% off your first order and free delivery. So this is what we're talking about, a 5-3 loss. Flames fall to Edmonton in game four in what was a, let's be honest, that one stings. It's a heartbreaker. They fight back to get it 3-3 after falling down 3 nothing in the first period. They get the break in one of the most bizarre game-tying goals I have ever seen and they still don't win the game. That goal on Mike Smith could have been, probably should have been, not only a game-changing moment, but a series-changing moment. And unfortunately, it wasn't. And I can understand if you're a little frustrated that, that it looks six minutes later, less than six minutes later, the Oilers retook the lead. And, and you know, as, as much as we are loath to do so on Flames Nation Live and, and all of our Flames Nation properties, I guess you got to give the Oilers a ton of credit for not letting it completely derail them. Like, that is, that's important, and they, they didn't, and, and good on them for finding a way to still win that game. But if you're the Flames, you've got to make them pay for that. And um, a regular listener of, of Sportsnet 960 came up to me uh, at the bar we're doing things at for road games, and he said, Pat, where's that going to, um, where's that going to rank on the Sportsnet misplays of the week? And I said, before we start dunking on Mike Smith, win the game. And they didn't. And, and so, yeah, it's slightly frustrating. That, that, that should have been, at the very least, a turning point in the game. And credit to the Oilers for not allowing it, but also frustrating that the Flames didn't allow that to happen. So now we get set for game five of this series. And for the first time this series, the Flames uh, facing elimination. And for the second time this year, the Flames are uh, facing the end of their season. Of course, game seven against Dallas, they also face the end of their season. Um, and uh, they won that game in overtime, as we know. Um, and we'll see what they can do. And, and look, they got to win a game. This is not a situation where they need to think about winning three straight. Just win game five at home and then see what happens. Give yourself a chance each night. And if you win game five, you give yourself a chance. And and that's got to be priority number one. And, and I know some will probably be confident they can do that. And some will not. I understand if you're not feeling confident. I also understand if you look and say, well, Mike Smith is, has shown some vulnerabilities and, you know, the, the Flames have made a lot of mistakes that have ended up in goals against and all that type of stuff. I can understand on both sides if you're feeling confident or, or optimistic or not feeling confident or optimistic about what happens on Thursday. But, you know, from a Flames standpoint and, and listening to them speak today, they didn't practice today. They just held a media availability. Hearing them speak today, I think it was pretty clear that, 
you know, they're focused on just winning one game on Thursday night and then seeing what happens from there. By the way, that game on Thursday night goes at 7.30. It'll actually be a 7.50 puck drop from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome. Uh, if you're not able to make it to the Dome, if you're watching out of town or watching at home, if you're watching the BOA playoff game from, uh, from home on Thursday, get down to Wine and Beyond, Liquor Depot, or Ace Liquor Stores as all 24 can packs of Budweiser, Bud Light, Coors Light, and Molson Canadian will be on sale for $35.99 plus tax and deposit on Edmonton Calgary game days during this round of the playoffs. Once again, Wine and Beyond, Liquor Depot, or Ace Liquor, Cubes, 24s of Bud, Bud Light, Coors Light, and Molson Canadian, $35.99. That's too good a deal to pass up. You having some buddies over for the game on Thursday night? Make sure you go on Thursday to any one of those stores, Ace, Wine and Beyond, or Liquor Depot for that deal, $35.99 for any one of those uh, that you see there for 24s. You're not getting a better deal than that on a game day anywhere. So uh, the Flames are in a spot where they have their backs against the wall. They've run into Connor McDavid, who's had himself a pretty good series, hasn't he? They did a pretty good job of slowing McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and Evander Kane down in game four, at least on five, at five on five, and yet those guys still combined for seven points. Three assists for Dreisaitl, two assists for McDavid, and two goals for Kane. And that's on a night the Flames did a pretty good job of slowing him down. Uh, that's Daryl Sutter, head coach of the Flames, on Wednesday afternoon when he spoke to the media and talked about Calgary's job going up against McDavid and company. said last night that, you know, Connor McDavid, it's, you can't stop him, but maybe you can contain him a bit. How do you feel your team did with that last night? We've done as well as anybody else has done against him, quite honest. And I think it's been, you know, that's all everybody's talked about. They've either talked about Jacob Markstrom or they've talked about Connor McDavid. That's all they've talked about. But in the end, that's not what what the difference in games is, right? You mentioned last night that game four was your best game of the series. Is that the blueprint you're looking for out of your Or what would you like to see improve? Well, obviously, we'll have to improve some things. What are those elements? I don't think I can get into that that is head coach Daryl Sutter Wednesday and I'll say this about the Flames whether it be um, wh whether it be five on five or just five on five against the McDavid line or just their overall team game I do think the Calgary Flames did some good things that they can build on in game five now it may not be enough and obviously their margin of error is zero now but I did see some things, the way they played against McDavid, the way that they limited that line, especially at even strength, some of their team game, their shot volume game, all that type of stuff. I do think they did a pretty good job of some of those things in game four. Now, got to limit the mistakes. Can't make the three consecutive mistakes on the Nugent Hopkins game winner. Can't give the puck away like Markstrom did on the Nugent Hopkins opening goal. Uh, can't take that dumb penalty from Toffoli. Um... So they did some good things and some things that they can build on. They also managed the game poorly again and took too many penalties. Uh, not too many penalties, made too many mistakes. Rather. They actually did a pretty good job on the penalty front. They took, made too many mistakes, managed the game poorly, and they lost the game. So a lot of the things they did good, those are building blocks. If you can do those things and limit some of those mistakes and manage a game a little bit better in game five, then you got a chance of extending this series. Let's get to the uh, live chat for the first time. Um, JF not feeling so positive right now. Says on the positive side, the season will end just in time for Stranger Things. I, I, well, come on, JF. Let's, let's talk about delaying your start of Stranger Things. Uh, Michael says Blake Coleman's a gem in the playoffs. He's been great. I think Blake Coleman has been as advertised in this postseason. Uh, this from Damien says, Tanev's essential, but Manny looks sore out there the longer the game went on. That guy gutted through so much pain. He's dealing with a separated shoulder or a broken collarbone or something like that right now. Something that if you play through it, it is extremely painful. Um, and give him credit. Uh, the blue line had their best game of this series. No coincidence it was the first game Tanev played. I know that he could not battle like usual on the Zach Hyman 2-0 goal shorthanded, but I still thought Chris Tanev was probably their best defenseman in game four. 
I thought he settled the entire blue line down. He can't shoot it right now, but he can still use his mobility, his smarts, his stick positioning. He's still a really important piece, and I think he's going to play again in game five, and that's a big boost for him. He's playing at like 60%, but he's still an important part of this group without question. Uh, this is from Chris, who says, I have hope but not much faith left. I can understand that. Um, Travis says, not feeling good about the playoffs. I thought the season was a success. Winning a round was important. Now, though, I feel like losing to the Oilers in this fashion would be a big underperformance. Um, Joey says, uh, God help us. The Flames are done. The Flames are going to need more than a miracle. They need to put Vladar in the rest of the way. Get Markstrom out now. Joey, I disagree so completely on putting Jacob, uh, not putting Jacob Markstrom in. I disagree so completely on going with Dan Vladar. And I'm not saying your opinion's wrong. We can agree to disagree, but I personally disagree. I think, I know that, Jake, look, Jacob Markstrom has been, over the balance of the 12 periods of this series, nowhere near good enough. No one is going to dispute that. But you go with the guy that got you there. This is not a scenario like Matt Murray and Mark Andre Fleury, or even Roberto Luongo and Corey Schneider, or this past situation with Mark Andre Fleury and Cam Talbot. It's not that. This is a guy. Dan Vladar has, has never played a playoff game before, and Jacob Markstrom is your Vesna Trophy finalist goaltender. You dance with the person that brought you. You go with the guy that got you there, and you go with your ride or die. And for me, that's Jacob Markstrom. There's no way that I'm going with anybody but Markstrom in game five. And if he doesn't get the job done, at least you know you went with your guy. That, to me, is the way to go. I'm not going any other way but going to Markstrom. I don't think they will either. But for me, I'm going to Markstrom all day, every day in game five. And I'm not even think about, thinking about going any other way. I give that guy a chance to win the biggest game of the year. I really do. So that's that's where I am on the goaltending front uh, as you go into game five. Still have time to get your thoughts in, get your comments in on our live chat. We'd love to hear from you on this edition of Flames Nation Live as uh, we put out the last call for comments. I'll remind you to go get that Calgary Flames keyboard for the rest of this Battle of Alberta, for the offseason, uh, for the Western Conference Final if they get there, whatever. Uh, it is your social media hub. You get great emojis. It is the perfect companion to your texting to your social media to your group chats during the playoffs uh go download either on google play or the app store uh it's the calgary flames keyboard just type those three words in calgary flames keyboard it'll pop up it's from our friends at keymoji it's a great companion to your 2022 playoff experience um what else we got here this from paul they need more from Johnny Hockey, Toffoli, and Dubé. I felt like these three forwards have been too quiet in this series. I'll exempt Dubé. I still think he's been effective and noticeable. And he's playing in a depth role. Toffoli was Toffoli's on the number one power play. Toffoli was brought in to be an offensive catalyst for this team. Yes, they need more from him. And yes, they need more from Johnny Gaudreau. No question about it. Um, Chris says, this is why I didn't want a battle of Alberta. Living in Edmonton is going to make it worse. Uh, Michael says, the Flames played well against the Oilers' first line. Flames' first line can catch a spark. Uh, JF says, clearly the Oilers have adjusted their game after game one. Why are they not, the Flames not able to do it too? Feels exactly like the Colorado series, and we'll see. Maybe there's, I do think they made some adjustment uh, adjustments in game four, and I thought that they were at, at points successful adjustments. They're going to have to make more going into game five, but I do think that they made some going into game four, and in some ways they worked. So we'll see if they can up the ante a little bit in game five facing elimination. Um, Joey doubles down, says Markstrom's a liability playing against the Oilers. Markstrom's spooked by the Oilers. And Joey, again, I disagree, and and I'm not that that doesn't factor into my decision. You go with the guy that got you there, if you ask me. I'm going with Jacob Markstrom all day, every day in game five. I, I respect the opinion, and you're not alone. 
Like Joey, there's plenty of people who think they should have gone to Vladar earlier or should go to him for Game 5. I'm just not one of those people personally. I disagree completely. I think they should stick with their guy. Well, I'm guessing they will do that, but we'll see what happens um, in Game 5. Josh says throwing Vladar in right now could destroy him, and that is, is also true. Um, and again, you go in my eyes with your Vesna Trophy finalist goaltender all day every day for a winner-take-all game. One more time, Flames Nation Live brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. One more reminder on that promo code FNLiveDD. Go download the app, create the account, use that promo code, and you're saving 25% on your first order and getting free delivery. That's with the promo code FNLiveDD. Well, Friday is the uh, next open spot for us. We'll see if we're breaking down a Flames Game 5 victory or if uh, and looking ahead to Game 6 on Saturday in Edmonton or if we're wrapping up the season. Uh, but we'll likely talk to you again on Friday, uh, this edition of Flames Nation Live. Wrap it up. Thank you for your live chats. Thank you for tuning in whether you uh, participated in the live chat or not. Enjoy Game 5 at the Saddledome. 7.30 face-off. 750 face off and we'll have it for you on radio sports that 960 the fan on tv sportsnet and cbc thanks for sticking around with us we'll uh, talk to you later this week it's been another edition of flames nation live be kind to one another stay safe and enjoy game five it's been flames nation live brought to you by doordash